OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find all the integer solutions a, b and c of this equation, where we've got a complex number raised to the power of a and another complex number raised to the power of c multiplied by some integer b. The first thing that we'll do to make this slightly easier for ourselves is we'll express each of these complex numbers in modulus argument forms. This will make raising them to some integer power slightly more manageable to work with. So the modulus of our first complex number, we're just essentially using some Pythagoras here, we can write this as the square root of 1 squared plus 2 plus root 3, all squares. So then when we expand the brackets here, we'll get 1 plus 2 squared is 4 plus a root 3 squared is 8. So we have 8 and then plus 4 root 3. But we can actually denest this square root as well. So we effectively want to make this look like something of the form x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, so that then we could write it as x plus y all squared. To make life slightly easier, I'll take out a factor of 2 here, so then we're left with 2 times 4 plus 2 root 3, and then we can write this as the square root of 2. Instead of writing this 4, we'll write this as a 3 and a 1 in a slightly different order, just to make this really clear. So now we've got 2 into 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1, so then you can see that 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1 is going to do the same thing as root 3 plus 1 all squared. So then we can take the square root of this, we get the positive root, we have root 2 multiplied by root 3 plus 1 as our modulus for our first complex number. And the calculations are very similar for our second complex number. To find the modulus, we use Pythagoras again, so it's 1 plus 2 minus root 3 all squared. So when we expand here, we now end up with once again, 8, but now it's minus 4 root 3. So using the same trick, we take out a factor of 2, then we've got 4 minus 2 root 3. Then we can express this 4 minus 2 root 3 again as 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1. Then we can see this looks now a lot like what you would have if you expanded root 3 minus 1 all squared. So then we can take the square root of this and we obtain a nice expression root 2 times root 3 minus 1. So here root 3 minus 1 is positive, so this is indeed the positive root here. So we've now found the modulus of each of these complex numbers, and next we'll find the argument. So for our first complex number, to find the argument, we'll just draw a quick picture to visualise what's going on. You've got the real part is 1, the imaginary part is 2 plus root 3. We're interested in this angle here. So here, because the real and imaginary parts are both positive, it's just as simple as taking arctan of your opposites divided by your adjacent, so 2 plus root 3 divided by 1, which is just 2 plus root 3. So this isn't the most well-known exact value of tan, but it turns out that 2 plus root 3 is equal to tan of 75 degrees, or 5 pi over 12 radians. So here the argument is actually just 5 pi over 12 for this first complex number. So there are nice ways to remember this or to derive this fact, but we won't go into the details right now. So for the argument of our second complex number, it's almost the same 1 plus 2 minus root 3 though, times i. So 2 minus root 3 is still positive, so we are still able to just use arctan. We've got 1 and 2 minus root 3. So this is just going to be arctan of 2 minus root 3 divided by 1, so just 2 minus root 3. And again, this is one, perhaps not our most well-known exact value of tan, but tan of 15 degrees gives you 2 minus root 3. So 15 degrees is the same as pi over 12 radians. We say then that the argument is pi over 12. So this is now really useful. We've got the modulus and we've got the argument for each of these complex numbers. So we can now write our original equation. We can get rid of this 1 plus 2 plus root 3i, and we can replace this by, first of all, the modulus, which is root 2 into root 3 plus 1. Then we multiply this by e to the i times 5 pi over 12. So this is our first complex number. This gets raised to the power of a. And now this is equal to b multiplied by the modulus root 2, root 3 minus 1. So that should be a 2. Then e to the i times pi over 12 is the argument of our second complex number then all of this gets raised to the power of c. So now we're at a point where it's slightly more manageable to work with. We'll proceed by considering our modulus and argument parts separately. So for example, on the left-hand side, we've got root 2, root 3 plus 1. We raise all of this 
to the power of a and consider this separately from our e to the i times 5 pi over 12 term raised to the power of a which gives us e to the i 5a pi over 12. Then on the right hand side we've got b multiplied by root 2 into root 3 minus 1 all raised to the power of c separately then e to the i pi over 12 to the power of c gives us e to the i c pi over 12. So we want to compare these two terms so we almost want to say that the argument in each of these needs to be the same. The only difficulty here is that while these two terms are positive, b isn't necessarily positive, so we need to split into two cases here depending on the sign of b. So first of all, if b is positive, and we'll just point out as well, b can't be equal to zero because there's no way this left-hand side could ever be equal to zero, so you can exclude the case where b is equal to zero, so b can be strictly positive. So when b is positive, we want the arguments of these to be the same, so we'll deal with the modulus being the same later on. So we effectively want this c pi over 12 to be equal to 5a pi over 12. The only difference here is we could actually multiply, add a copy of 2 pi to this. So we could have 2 pi or a multiple of 2 pi, so 2k pi, we'll say, where k can be any integer. So this would also give you the same complex number because e to the 2 pi i is just 1. So we can add any power of this we like. So this does simplify somewhat. We can get rid of our factors of pi. Multiplying throughout by 12, we get c is equal to 5a plus 24k, where again k is just some integer. So that's in the first case where b is positive. But when b is negative, we have a slightly different scenario. So this modulus is positive, this modulus is positive, but we have a negative in b here. So these two complex numbers in the red boxes aren't actually equal to each other. One is the negative of the other. So instead of, previously we said c pi over 12 was equal to 5a pi over 12 plus some multiple 2k of pi. So instead of having this, all we need to do is add an extra factor of pi, because essentially we need this to be equal to the negative of this, so multiplying by minus 1 just adds pi to the argument. So we just add a factor of pi here, and again k is just any integer. So once again, we can multiply, we can get rid of our factors of pi there, multiply by 12 on both sides, we get c is equal to 5a plus 24k plus 12 where k can be any integer. So now covering these two different cases, we've got a nice expression for c. We know that c has to be 5 times a plus some multiple of 24 when b is positive, and we have almost the same thing but plus 12 as well when b is negative. We can get some further restrictions on c, see how c is related to a, by considering now our modulus term here raised to the power of a and comparing this with our modulus term raised to the power of c there. So if we focus on this modulus term, the thing that we're raising to the power of c, they look quite similar, and actually what we want to do is make this look more like root 2 times root 3 plus 1. So here I'm going to take advantage of the fact that when we take the reciprocal of this, we can write this as 1 over root 2 into root 3 minus 1, and this is all now to the power of minus c. When you rationalise the denominator here, you multiply by root 2 and root 3 plus 1, so actually, the numerator, once we've rationalised the denominator, is the exact same thing as what we have on the left-hand side. So this will make our comparison much easier. So our, now, now our denominator is going to be root 2 squared gives us 2, and root 3 minus 1 times root 3 plus 1 gives us root 3 squared is 3, and just minus 1. And this is all to the power of minus c. So you can see here our 2 times another 2 to the power of minus c from the denominator will give us... 4 to the power of c, I'll write this as 2 to the power of 2c, and then we're left with root 2, root 3 plus 1, all raised to the power of minus c. So this is now going to make comparison between the left and right hand side much nicer. And something else we can do to make these comparisons easier is to actually get rid of our e to the i theta terms essentially on each side by splitting up into the two cases. So the key thing to notice here is that in case 1, when b is positive, these two terms, e to the i theta, actually have to be equal to each other. They need to be the same argument. The only difference in case 2 is that b is negative, so e to the i 5a pi over 12 actually has to be equal to the negative of e to the i c pi over 12. So we'll attempt now to proceed where we highlight in red any changes we would need to make in case 2, but the calculations are very, very similar in each case. 
So the first thing we would do is multiply on both sides by root 2, root 3 plus 1 to the power of c to take this term onto the left hand side. So we'd be left with root 2, root 3 plus 1. This is now raised to the power of a plus c. And then getting rid of our e to the i theta terms, this is now just, in case 1, it's just equal to b times 2 to the 2c. And there's nothing else left. But in case 2, we just have a negative sign, so I'll include that there. So now we can use this root 2 to the power of a plus c. The fact that this is actually a power of 2, we'll take this over onto the right-hand side, so we've just got powers of 2 on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, all we've got is root 3 plus 1 to the power of a plus c. Then on the left-hand side, we've got potentially the negative in case 2 of b times 2 to the 2c, then root 2 to the power of a plus c, this is 2 to the a plus c over 2, so we take away a power of a plus c over 2. So now we're ready to substitute in our different values of c in each case. On the left hand side we have root 3 plus 1 to the power of a plus c, so this would give us a 6a plus 24k, and the only difference is in case 2 we would have to plus 12 as well, so let's add that in. And this is going to be equal to possibly the negative in case 2 of b times 2 to the power of 2c minus this. So I'll do this in a couple of steps. So 2c gives us 10a plus 48k and plus 24 in case 2. But then we also need to take away our a plus c over 2 terms. So we need to now take away a plus c over 2 will give us 3a plus... 12k, and then in case 2 we have this plus 12 divided by 2, so that gives us a plus 6 term there. So now we can simplify on the right hand side, we get the negative in case 2 of b times 2 to the power of 10a minus 3a gives us 7a, 48 minus 12 gives us a plus 36k, and finally in case 2 we have 24 minus 6, so this gives us a plus 18. So the next step we're going to take is actually notice that this root 3 plus 1 to some integer power term. And if we compare this with an integer multiplied by an integer power of 2, what we have on the left hand side looks like it's always going to be irrational unless this power actually happens to be equal to 0, whereas what we have on the right hand side looks like it's always going to be rational. So we'll explore this in a bit more depth now and try to prove this a little bit more rigorously. But this will lead to some further constraints on the values k. So you could set this up quite formally if you like and do a proof by induction for positive values of capital N here. We essentially want to show that root 3 plus 1 to the power of n can never be rational unless that power happens to be 0. And if you were to take negative values of n then you would just have the reciprocal of something you know to be as irrational. So we just look at positive values of n. Let's say for example root 3 plus 1 squared. When we expand out we're going to get root 3 squared plus 1 squared, so 4 plus 2 root 3. And then to calculate root 3 plus 1 cubed, we could take our previous term and just multiply by root 3 plus 1. You'd get 10 plus 6 root 3 now. So you can see these are all of a form p plus q times root 3. So the key idea here would be that root 3 plus 1 multiplied by p plus q root 3, where p and q are both positive, when we expand all of this, we're going to get p plus 3q as our integer part. Then we'll also have as our non-integer part just a plus p plus q times root 3. So the idea here is that p and q are always positive, And if we start with q, we end up with p plus q. So this is actually getting bigger each time. So this is always greater than 0. So we always have some multiple of root 3 there plus some integers. So this is always going to be irrational. So you can make this a little bit more rigorous if you like. But this covers the case where n is positive, and when n is negative, you'd have the reciprocal of something you know is irrational. So that also would have to be irrational. So the upshot here is we can then say that this power has got to be 0. So we can conclude that 6a plus 24k, but then possibly with the plus 12 in case 2, this has got to be equal to 0 in order for this to be equal to our b times the power of 2 term, which we know is rational. Now considering our two cases separately again, first of all in case 1 we have 6a plus 24k equals 0, so we can actually write a in terms of k. We get a is equal to minus 4k. 
which is really useful. And then we can substitute this into our original equation. But don't forget that the whole point of doing this was that root 3 plus 1 was now raised to the power of 0 so that we get something rational. So the whole left hand side just gets killed off and we're just left with a 1 there. And on the right hand side we don't need the negative in case 1. You've got b times 2 to the 7a plus 36k. So now we can rearrange this but don't forget a is equal to minus 4k so you've got 1 is equal to b times it's 2 to the 28 minus 28k plus 36k so 2 to the 8k. So rearranging we get b is equal to 2 to the minus 8k. So just so we're more consistent with our minus 4k's I'm going to write this as 4 to the power of minus 4k. So we've got a nice expression for b now in terms of our parameter k. Don't forget b needs to be an integer so actually k here can't be positive so we impose then that k has got to be less than or equal to 0 otherwise b couldn't be an integer and it wouldn't be a solution to our original equation. All that's left now is to find c in case 1. So you know c is equal to 5a plus 24k so this turns into minus 20k plus 24k when we use the fact that a is minus 4k so c is actually equal to positive 4k in this first case. So then we can conclude in case 1 our solutions to the original equation are going to be of the form abc is equal to minus 4k, 4 to the minus 4k and positive 4k where k is some parameter, an integer less than or equal to 0. But a slightly nicer way of expressing this we could take let's say m is equal to minus k so we can write this as 4m, 4 to the power of 4m and minus 4m where m is just some non-negative integer. Now we can apply the same argument for case 2. So we've got 6a plus 24k plus 12 equals 0 so this gives us a is equal to minus 4k minus 2 when we rearrange to give us a nice expression for a in terms of our parameter k. So we can do the same thing for b. Remember the whole point of finding that 6a plus 24k plus 12 equals 0 was that the left hand side now becomes 1 and this is equal to in case 2 minus b times 2 to the 7a plus 36k plus 18. So now we can use the fact that a is minus 4k minus 2 to write this as 1 is equal to minus b so 7a gives us a 2 to the minus 28k so plus 36k gives us 8k and we've also got 7 times minus 2 minus 14 plus 18 gives us a plus 4. So we can rearrange and get that b is equal to minus 2 to the minus 8k minus 4 and just like before we'll write this as b is actually equal to minus 4 to the power of minus 4k minus 2 so we have this minus 4k minus 2 that's consistent. So notice here again b has to be an integer so in order for minus 4 to a negative power to be an integer we need not just that k is less than or equal to 0 because if k was equal to 0 we would still get something that wasn't an integer so we actually need k is less than or equal to minus 1 in order for b to be an integer. And finally for c we've got c is equal to 5a plus 24k plus 12 so using the fact that a is minus 4k minus 2 so 5a will give us a minus 20 times k and minus 10 and we've got plus 24k and plus 12 to add in there so we get c in its simplified form is 4k minus 10 plus 12 gives us plus 2. So we can conclude in our second case where b is negative that our triple a, b and c are going to be of the form minus 4k minus 2 for a, b is going to be minus 4 to the minus 4k minus 2 and c is going to be just 4k plus 2 where k is some integer less than or equal to minus 1. So again a nicer way of expressing this we take let's say n now is equal to minus k we'll get 4n plus 2 then we've got minus 4 to the 4n plus 2 and finally minus 4n plus 2 in brackets where n is now an integer greater than or equal to 1. So we've covered both cases now so these are all of our solutions to the original equation we've got a b and c can be 4m, 4 to the 4m, and minus 4m, or we could have 4m plus 2 minus 4 to the 4m plus 2 and a negative of 4m plus 2, covering both our cases.